Welcome, my name is Joe Gukaskis, and tonight um, we're going to be talking about the three reasons why your psychic gifts are blocked. Now, if you just signed up for the Unblock Your Psychic Third Eye five-day challenge, you are in the right place. I've been doing um, some heavy promotions with this, um, trying to get people on board to take my next challenge, which begins on February 20th. And if you haven't signed up for the five-day challenge yet, um, it's not too late, you could still sign up. And again, we start on February 20th, that's a Sunday, and we start that on noon Pacific, all right? What I'm doing leading up to that time is I'm going to be doing a, a few pre-trainings because I know it's, it's still two weeks out. Um, and while we're waiting, right, for that date to start, I wanted to give you some great content um, while we're waiting, okay? So tonight's going to be all about the three reasons why, why your psychic gifts are blocked. Now, before we get into that, um, who am I? Who's Joe, right? So <laughs> let me briefly introduce myself. Um, especially if you're meeting me for the first time. And if you are meeting me for the first time, um, go ahead and just say in the comments, like, hey, meeting you for the first time, or I already got your book, or I already um, did a previous challenge of yours, a previous training. Let me know um, where we met, right? So um, let's see, Amber says meeting for the first time, and th there's a bit of a delay um, with Zoom and Facebook. So, okay. All right, and so I see some meeting for first time, um, some with the book. Okay, first time. All right, awesome. Yeah, so let me tell you who I am. First of all, my name is Joe Gagaskis, and I'm author of this book. It's called Journey of the Awakened Psychic. It's the 10-step guide to unlocking your psychic third eye. Now, it's an award-winning book by Soul and Spirit magazine. Um, and I wrote this book a, a few years ago now. And uh, when it when I entered it into, I, I entered it into a contest. And Soul and Spirit magazine is based out of the United Kingdom. Um, you know, I didn't know that this little book here would would make such an impact. Um, it's in the hands now. Well, maybe not in the physical hands, but at least in the e-copy hands of over, I want to say up to 20,000 people now. So, you know, many people have read the book. Now, if you haven't gotten a copy of the book yet, um, you could go ahead and just type in book in the comments and then either myself or my assistant will get you an e-copy. Okay. Um, and I know for... If you're in Zoom, if you um, just registered, you actually get this as a bonus, okay? So if you haven't checked your confirmation email yet, um, you'll see a link um, when you signed up for the challenge that you should have got a copy, an e-copy of the book, okay? All right. Um, awesome. When I see people saying book, book, book. Okay, awesome. <laughs> All right. Now, let me tell you why. Why did I write this book in the first place? Well, if you're anything like me, right? I was very psychic as a child. I was very open as a child. And case in point, um, you know, just a quick story of, of one of my first memories awakening my psychic gifts. I remember laying in bed one night, right? And I was a preteen. I wasn't even, you know, a teenager yet. I remember just laying in bed and I looked, and I woke up in the middle of the night. It was like 2 a.m. And I remember it was 2 a.m. because, you know, those old-fashioned digital clocks, right, that kind of flip the numbers. <laughs> that gives you an idea of how old I am. Um, it said 2 a.m., right? It said 2 o'clock. And my, I, I opened my eyes all of a sudden in the middle of the night. And I remember just looking up at the ceiling. And I looked up at the ceiling, and I saw this glow of light on the ceiling. And I look around, I go, there's no headlights. It's not coming from a car. It's not coming from like a nightlight or anything like that. And I'm like, wow, it's kind of swirling around. And, you know, I was like, okay, what is that, right? And then next thing you know, the, the light disappeared. But I was left with this message that your grandmother just passed away or your grandmother died was the actual message I heard. Right. I'm like, what? You know, and I was freaked out, right? Because I was still a kid, right? I didn't understand all this. Um, so I, I tried to go back to sleep, but you know, I, I really couldn't, right? 
Well, when I did wake up the next day, right, my dad comes up to me. He goes, hey, Joe, bad news. Your grandmother died last night, right? And I remember just in that moment, I'm like, whoa, like that's the message I got last night. How could I have known that? And mind you, you guys, my grandmother was all the way in the Philippines, okay? So here I am in California. My grandmother was in the Philippines. And like, there's no way I could have known, okay? There's just no way I could have known. So anyway, that happened, right? And then growing up, you know, and let me know if you could relate to any of this, right? Like you've had messages in your dreams or um, for me growing up, like lights would turn off and street lights would turn off. And it didn't matter if I was here in California, I was in the Navy for 11 years. Um, I was stationed in North Carolina. I was there, street lights would turn off there, right? I was stationed in Naples, Italy, street lights would turn off over there. And the whole time I was like, what is that? Right. And I'd always suspect like it's either a spirit guide or maybe it's my grandmother or something. Um, and I'd ask my friends, right? I go, do streetlights turn off for you? And they're like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, and so, you know, as and I tried to brush it off. Right. And let me know if you could relate to this. Like the more you tried to brush it off, the more these things kept happening. And maybe for you, it could be you know, stuff like 333. How many of you see like 333, 777, 1111 all the time? And you're sitting there thinking, is that a sign? Or maybe you get ringing in the ears. How many of you get ringing in the ears? And you don't have an earache, right? But every time you get the ring in the ears, I see, <laughs> yes, ringing, a raising of hand. Um, yeah, when you get the ringing in the ears, you're like, where is that coming from? Right? I don't have an earache right? Or, you know, maybe you have dreams. And, you know, I, I worked with a student the other day. And, um, you know, when, when you become a student of mine, you know, I, I offer readings. And so I just gave her a reading. And for her, she goes, Joe, I've been getting these dreams of, of like my aunt coming to me in my dream or my, my grandmother coming into me, to me in, into my dreams, right? So I'm going to just go ahead and type in dreams if, if that's you. Right. So all told, right, you know, I was having these experiences growing up. And um, if you're like me, I was just like, I got to figure out what's going on. What does all this mean? What does it mean when I get the three, three, threes all the time or the ringing in the ears or what's with these streetlights turning off? Well, when I got older, this is when I was more of an adult now. Right. I decided I need to figure this out. And I just had this pull, like I had to figure this out. Um, so I remember I was just looking online one day and I was like, I found a school. And this is when I used to live in San Diego. I'm like, whoa, there's even such a thing as a school. Um, so I decided to check it out, right? And I remember like, I kept looking at the schedule and I was like, oh, should I do this? Should I not? I remember I was nervous. <clears throat> I was still questioning, is this even real? Am I making this stuff up? How many of you can relate to that, right? You're wondering, is this even real, right? Am I, am I crazy for even having these experiences, let alone wanting to put myself out there for having these experiences, right? So I remember I went and I learned these tools, right? I'm like, you could actually control it. <laughs> because at this point, my, my, my abilities were just, I just couldn't control it, right? When the streetlights would turn off and the ringing in the ears would come in, whenever I'd see the 333s, like it just, it felt like it wasn't in my control, right? So how many of you can relate to that, right? So I remember like getting the training and learning the tools and, you know, stuff like grounding and awakening the third eye, psychic protection, like all these things that you're going to be learning when, when we do get into the five day challenge. And, you know, next thing you know, I was reading, I was reading others. I decided to start my own reading services. Um, and eventually I, I uh, became an instructor at that school. Okay. So I've been teaching now ever since uh, around since 2013, 2014 now. So I've been doing this a while and 
um, up to this point, I've been, I've worked with over a thousand students. Um, like I said, there, I've had maybe about 20,000 people download a copy of my book. And so, you know, now I'm just doing what I love, right? Which is just helping people, working with my gifts, and now taking what I've learned and now helping people like you so that you can open up your gifts and learn to help others, right? Let me know if, uh, if, you, if you feel a calling, like you're someone who naturally, you love helping others, All right? And if that's you, right? If you love helping others, um, let me know, right? Because if that's you, then you're especially going to love this training. Well, anyway, I just wanted to take a, take this time to introduce myself. Like I said, many of you are meeting me for the first time. So why don't we get straight into the training, okay? The training for today. And like I said, the topic for today is the three reasons why your psychic gifts are blocked. And by the way, um, after we're done with this, uh, I'm going to hold a real quick Q&A. So I, I plan to you know, stay here for about an hour, but if we have questions that come in, um, I'm going to go ahead and answer those at the end, okay? So I already see some questions coming in, but like I said, let me get through the material, and then we'll, I'll do a Q&A at the end here, okay? Well, are you all ready for, for this training here? We're going to get into the three reasons why your psychic glyphs are blocked. Um, First of all, let me just do a quick poll. How many of you, like you've already been you've been exploring or maybe you've been trying to open up your gifts or maybe you were psychic as a child like me, but now you're, you're having trouble controlling your gifts. It feels like you're blocked. Go ahead and type in the word blocked if you could relate to, to feeling blocked at all. All right, so I see Deborah blocked. Um, Zoom user doesn't have a name there, but you're feeling blocked, Amber blocked. Ravi blocked. Um, Nat says it's my journey to assist others, but blocked. Okay, that's on Zoom. And then I know on Facebook, there's a, a bit of a delay. All right, so many of you are feeling blocked. Okay, so if that's you, this is the perfect um, topic for you. Now, when the first reason, right? So these are the uh, three reasons why you're blocked. The first reason why you're feeling blocked, okay, especially with your psychic third eye, is you may be someone, especially if you're an empath, right? You're, the way that you read energy is you get into feeling energy, okay? So reason number one is that you're actually over feeling energy. Now, what does that mean, right? Like when you feel energy, you're over feeling energy. Well, let me give you just a real quick uh, psychic anatomy, right? Spiritual anatomy lesson here. When it comes to reading energy, right? There's different ways you could read by feeling and that's more of a second chakra. So if you don't know what chakras are, chakras are just energy centers of the body, all right? And in each energy center, like your heart's an energy center, your third eye is an energy center, your crown chakra is an energy center. Well, your second chakra right below the belly button is where you feel energy, right? Where you get a feel for energy. Now, feeling energy is fine, right? You could get a feel for energy. The problem though is when, especially if you're an empath, right? When you're feeling too much energy or when other people's energies get in your space, so how many of you can relate to that? Like all this energy gets in your space, right? All this foreign energy. Um, like some days you have so much energy in your space that you don't even know who you are anymore, right? And that's the thing with empaths. And go ahead and type in the word empath if you could relate to this. Empaths not only feel energy, but you also absorb energy, especially if you're an empath. All right, so let me know if you could relate to that. So a bunch of you are saying empaths, empaths cause terrible anxiety, says Ravi, right? Empath, empath, okay. Now, the, the problem with overfeeling of energy, okay, is that here we are, we're, I'm training you on how to look with your third eye, 
Okay. Because, you know, when you could see energy, right, you know how the saying seeing is believing, right? So when you could actually see the energy with your third eye, then that gives you a different, like a whole other level of validation. Right. So when you're stuck in your second chakra, right, because of all the feeling, the blocked and other people's energies, right, then it's hard to rise up out of your second chakra so that you could see energy with their your third eye or your sixth chakra, all right? So let me know if this is kind of making sense, right? Um, Peter on Facebook is saying energy in space now. <laughs> Empath, Tom, Thomas, uh, Thomasine says empath, Michelle, empath. Okay, Megan, empath 100%. Yesterday I had anxiety from too much energy I was absorbing all day. Okay, so... Here's the deal with that. When you are over feeling, right? And you're absorbing all these energies, right? And how many of you have like, like when someone else is scared, you feel scared, right? And you're like, I'm not really afraid, but that other person's fear energy got in my space and now I'm feeling afraid, right? Has that ever happened to you? Or it could be anxiety or it could be like you feel pressure or you feel doubt, right? Well, all of those are lower vibrational energies. Y'all get that? So here you are, when you are accessing your psychic space, you actually need to be in a higher vibrational space. If you're stuck in these lower vibrations, then guess what? That is gonna lead to you feeling blocked. Does that make sense? So logically, if you could get unblocked by removing these negative energies, these lower vibrational energies, clearing that second chakra, right? Then you won't be so stuck in your second chakra and then you can rise up and move up into your upper chakras, okay? Especially your sixth chakra and your crown chakra. All right, so <laughs> Thomasine, thank you. Yes, you didn't butcher my name. <laughs> um, Peter, love how... You explain rising the energy to the brow. Okay, great. Glad this is making sense. All right. And Robbie says, very much so. You make it much easier to understand. All right, great. So I'm glad that you're all uh, are getting this. So that's reason number one. All right. Now, reason number two. So if reason number one is over feeling the energy, reason number two is when you start overthinking. Okay, so put it this way. Um, picture it like this. There are two minds, right? There's your thinking mind, and then there's your intuitive mind, right? Now, from experience, right, if any of your energy is in your thinking mind, then you have less of your energy in your intuitive mind, right? So, with that in mind, right, when you start getting, say, like these three, three, threes, seven, seven, sevens, right, or you get the ringing in the ears, or you get this, you get dreams, right, or you get premonitions of things that are happening, or that are going to happen, right, and you're like, whoa, it came true, or it could even be as something as simple as you think of someone, and then next thing you know, they text you. Right? Has that ever happened to you, to you guys, any of these, right? Like you think of someone, the next thing you know, they text you. Well, the question is, in those moments, like you're dreaming, like you're just walk, going about your day, three, 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 literally those things come out of nowhere, right? So the question is, in those moments, were you thinking at all? You weren't, right? When you're dreaming, you're not thinking, you're just dreaming. Okay. Or when you had, when you were thinking of someone and the next thing you know, they text you, right? And they, it just comes out of nowhere, right? You weren't thinking. Okay. But, you know, I, I used to teach this class in person. I teach everything by Zoom now, right? It's so funny because I could tell when students are not in their psychic space because they're doing this. Hmm. Right. Whenever you put your hand on your chin, right, that's that's a sign of like you're thinking. <laughs> and then the students will be like, 
I don't know. I don't know why it's not working. Hmm. My, my guests will block. Hmm. Right. It's like they're, they're thinking of the process. They're trying to think their way into like, here they are in their thinking mind, but none of their energy now is in their intuitive mind. Does that make sense? And then the problem with that is that once you start trying to think about these things, because remember you weren't thinking in the first place, right? But now you're thinking, and then now you're overthinking because you're trying to think about it some more, and then you're thinking about it some more, right? And then now you're like, uh, my gifts aren't working at all. <laughs> so how many of you could relate to that? Go ahead and type in the word overthinker, right? Ember already typed it in. Uh, yeah, it's like when you're when you're in your thinking mind, guess what? You're just simply not in your intuitive mind, your intuitive psychic mind at all. Okay, does that make sense? So the question becomes, well, how do you, you know, if your mind is overactive, right? How do you quiet your mind, right? Well, guess what? That's what we're going to cover in the five-day challenge. But let me just go ahead and plant the seed, right? That if you are doing this, hmm, or you're just trying to overthink, right? Like I've seen <laughs> just people just really trying to make their psychic guess work extra hard, right? Whenever you're doing that, guess what? You're just not. It's just, it's literally impossible to think your way into your psychic mind. Okay. All right. So I see a couple overthinker, overthinker. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So first, that's reason number two is overthinking, right? So there's overfeeling, overthinking. So what is reason number three? Well, reason number three is the reason third reason why you're blocked is that you're just simply trying too hard all right too much effort so it's very similar to overthinking right um but trying too hard it's it's similar but there's there's a difference here when you're trying too hard to make your gifts work right you notice whenever you try to, too hard for anything, like your body gets really tense, right? You're like clenched up, right? So how many people could relate to that when you're just trying too hard? Now, effort, right? The energy of effort is actually processed in your third chakra, okay? So that's your solar plexus, right? So whenever you're trying to do too much effort or you're trying to control it or trying to power your way through, stuff, right? That's a third chakra kind of activity, right? So same thing as being in your second chakra. If too much of your energy is in your second chakra, or in this case, too much energy now in your third chakra, guess what? Less energy is up here in your sixth chakra. Does that make sense? So here you are trying to open up your third eye. But if less of your energy is up here and more is down here, guess what? That's going to be yet another block. It's going to be yet another reason why it's hard for you to access your psychic gifts. Okay? So <laughs> let me know if all of this is making sense, right? You're overfeeling, overthinking, um, or you're, you're just trying too hard, too much effort. Right, so all of these will knock you out of your psychic space. All right, so let me know if any of you could relate to all this. Um, Amber is already saying, well, I'm all three, LOL, definitely where I'm supposed to be is here right now. <laughs> so, um, and Robbie says, hit the nail on the head. Amber says, so much sense. Okay, so for those of you, right, you've been overfeeling, overthinking, just trying too hard. Um, guess what? when you start to realize that that's actually what's going on, then that's like half the battle, you guys, right? So if you had the tools to where you could clear that second chakra of other people's energies, right? Clear your, like release all these stuck energies, all these stuck emotions that you've absorbed, right? Especially if you're an empath, don't you think that it'll be easier then to tap into your psychic gifts, especially tap into your psychic third eye? Of course, right? If you had tools to where you could come out of your third chakra, right? So learn how to relax the body, 
rather than being in so much effort, don't you think that would also make it easier to, to get into your psychic space, right? And then, you know, this whole thing with overthinking, if you had tools to where you could relax your overthinking mind, right? Again, wouldn't it be so much easier to then mimic, right? I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna use that word for now. It's gonna mimic those times when you weren't thinking, right? When you got the three, three, threes or when you're near your dream space or um, someone mentioned like tapping into your subconscious, right? Very similar, okay? I'm not gonna teach you like anything hypnotic or nothing like that, but what if you had the tools so that you could relax the body and then turning on your psychic gifts is more like turning on and off a psychic light switch. So how many of you would be interested in that, right? To where you could turn on and off your gifts like a light switch. Go ahead and type in the word light switch <laughs> if that's something that excites you or that you could be interested in. All right, let me just read some comments here. I could relate. Yes, I get past overthinking. And it comes to as clear as day. Yes, Thomasine. Um, one second, you guys. One thing you guys should know right off the bat, come here. I have a dog, this is Layla, say hi to Layla. <laughs> she, uh, she comes in and out, I tried to keep the doors closed, but when she uh, wants to come in, she's just gonna come in and she, she's just gonna keep crying and you might hear her cry in the background. So what, as we go through the training, you'll, you'll see um, Layla make an appearance time to time. <laughs> All right, so anyway, that's Layla. Uh, so anyway, I see a bunch of you saying light switch, light switch. Okay, awesome. Um, and so a lot of you are saying, uh, hey, let's keep, yeah, she's only like five pounds. She's 13 years old. Can you believe it? Her birthday was on, on January, uh, early January. Okay, uh, so where are we at now? I'm just looking at my bullet points, make sure I covered everything so far. Okay, well, those are the three reasons, you guys, okay? So I like to keep these pretty brief, um, as brief as I can here. So just to review real quick, first reason why you're feeling blocked or why your psychic gifts are blocked is that you're overfeeling, stuck in the second chakra. If you're in your second chakra, that means you're not in your sixth, right? Same thing if you're overthinking. If you're in your thinking mind and not in your intuitive mind, right? Then that's yet another reason why you could be blocked. And then a third reason is just simply trying too hard. The body's too clenched up. You need to be relaxed, all right? When, when you're, when you're um, attempting to access your gifts. Now, a lot of you said you'd be interested in learning the tools so that you could overcome, overcome these things. So just as a reminder, the actual five-day challenge starts on on February 20th, yeah, <laughs> sorry, uh, lost my place in my, my bullet points here. So February 20th, right, that's a Sunday. That is at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. So I'm gonna be doing something very similar to where I'm gonna be doing this by Zoom or Facebook. And if you happen to miss one of the days, um, it will be recorded, so you could always watch the recording. And I'll post the recording on YouTube. Okay. Actually, whenever I do it on Facebook Live, the recording becomes available immediately after. And then on February 21st to 24th, it's going to be every day at 6 p.m. Um, Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, you know, that's 6 p.m. is like when people on the West Coast are off work. So that's why it seems kind of later. Um, but, you know, it's my best. It's the best I could do to accommodate everybody. So those are the dates, okay? And I will be doing two more pre-trainings um, between now and, and the 20th. So the next one will be this Sunday, and it'll be the three keys to opening your psychic third eyes, what I'll be covering in pre-training two. And then pre-training three, um, I'm going to talk about the three stages to psychic awakening, all right? So just some content to give you while we're waiting for the actual training to start, Um but other than that, I'd like to now turn it over to you guys. 
um, while you have me online. I'll, I'll probably stay online for another oh, 10, 20 minutes here. Um, what questions do you have? I'm not going to, I'm not a re in my reading space. So I'm not, I'm not going to be giving readings. However, what questions, I'd love to answer any questions you have around your own psychic awakening process, right? Like what have you wanted to know that perhaps you haven't been able to ask anyone else before or were too scared to ask, or, you know, maybe you thought people would think you're crazy, right? For asking these questions. Um, now's your opportunity to do so. Okay. So uh, I'm seeing some questions coming in. Uh, Roger's asking, what will be the charge for this? So the challenge, it's a great question. Thank you for asking. The challenge itself, the five-day challenge is actually free, okay? Now, full disclosure, right? I will be doing an offer on day five for my more advanced training. I have a new group of students um, starting on March... 10. Okay. So the idea is that if you love the training, right, you like my teaching style, you love what you learned, and you got out a lot out of the five day challenge, then I'd love to invite you to the new group. It's an eight week training, where we really go in depth on awakening your psychic third eye even more beyond the five day challenge, right. So if you wanted to learn stuff like how to read past lives, how to read chakras, how to read your aura, how to read, you know, um, how to read the future, right? Those are things that you could read when you open up your psychic third eye. That's what we're covering in the eight day or eight week um, training starting on March, uh, March 10. All right. So yes, the five day training is free, right? And then yes, there is going to be an investment into the eight week program, um, but by completing the five-day challenge, I'm going to be giving you all discounts, okay? So I'm going to be giving you a special offer for that. Um, but whether you continue or decide to continue on to the eight-day or the eight-week program, um, my goal is that you just get a lot of value out of the five days, okay? No pressure, right? I, I'm like the worst salesperson. So if you decide not to continue, hey, that's your choice, okay? Um, but for those of you that do want to continue on to more advanced training, um, it's going to be awesome. All right. I, I just love, like I said, I love what I do. And it's always fun watching students when they just really start to own their psychic power. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's see. I'm going to switch back and forth between Zoom. Oh, the uh, comments are coming in real quick. All right. Zoom and Facebook. So let's see. Uh, Katrina is asking how much for the advanced training. I really enjoy your teaching style. It has done wonders for developing my gifts. So you got to stay tuned because uh, I will be giving a special offer. I don't want to share that yet, but just know that you will. Um, it's going to be really good. All right. Uh, I haven't offered it at this price before, so I'll just put it that way. Um, let's see. Peter is saying, I've got more people anxious for me to be open than myself. <laughs> yeah, that's so true, right? Because... A lot of people who don't understand all this, they're, they're like, oh, what, what's all that woo-woo stuff? Are you making it up? It's just coincidence, right? You got all these doubters. And then you have the other side where people are like, oh, don't open up to that because you're going to be invaded by the spirit guide or whatever, right? Like, you don't have to fear all that, you guys, right? In the world of energy, everything's just energy, Okay, so you don't have to be afraid of opening your gifts at all, especially when you learn the tools I'm going to be teaching you on the five day challenge around psychic protection, learning all about your psychic boundaries, right? And then when you just have that attitude, like it's just energy, right? Then nothing's really scary or bad or anything like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ravi's asking, how do, I, how do you begin meditating? So Great question. Um, like I mentioned, part of the training, right? Part of the practice is you want to start with quieting down the body, right? And so simple breathing, right? Take 20 deep breaths. And by the 20th breath, slow, methodical, deep breaths, of course, your body's going to start to relax, right? By that point. And then, then when you get to that point, then the tools I'm going to be teaching you in the five-day challenge to more specifically 
awaken your psychic third eye, right? There are ways to get into that with energy work. However, before you get into the energy work, you really do need to learn how to relax the body, right? So everyone go to take a nice deep, like down to your belly breath right now, like one deep breath. And notice that when you do exhale, you notice how your body just instantly goes, ah, right? You do that two or three more times, right? So a lot of people, especially when you get into the overthinking, right? You're, and the over, um, over just trying too hard, right? I find that when people are in that space, they're not breathing. <laughs> so one of the best ways to learn how to meditate breathe okay and then i'm going to teach you more when you, when we do get to the five-day challenge um ravi says all your dates add up to one knowledge and numerology awesome love that yeah i'm not a numerology person but i love when um, people bring all these other modalities into it so okay uh let's see Katrina says, I need help with my medium abilities. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the thing with mediumship a lot, or any psychic gifts, right? The foundation for it, whether you become a clairvoyant with your third eye or be, choose to become a medium, the whole thing about relaxing, not too much effort, not too much overthinking, right? All those apply, whether you want to be a medium, clairvoyant, a healer, or whatnot, Okay. And in particular with mediumship abilities, um, for those, those of you that are not familiar, mediumship involves where you bring energy into the body, right? Um, so if you've ever seen where people like mediums, right, they're, they're talking to the dead or something, and then they start talking like the, the being that they're channeling, right? That's a form of mediumship. Well, the thing with becoming a medium, before you choose to go that route of becoming a medium, you really do have to clean out your, your body, right? Because if you have all this foreign energy in your body and then a being comes in and then hits that foreign energy, well, not only will you get affected, right? But the being that you're trying to channel, that being will also get affected, okay? So mediumship is like a whole other level where you really have to have a nice, clean psychic space, okay? All right, so let's see. Um, Roger's asking, so is this for psychics only? No, actually, I've had so many people come in where they're not just psychics, right? They're healers, are already in Reiki, numerologists. Um, I've had all kinds of professions, everyone from like psychologists to lawyers to engineers to, um, you know, just your everyday light worker. Um, I'm trying to think of who my current students are. Oh, I've, I've had many hairdressers. I've had stay-at-home moms, like those are a lot of who attend uh, my training. So it's like a, really a wide spectrum. And so no, it's not for psychics only. All right, uh, let's see, Prelly says, newbie here, how do you start the tool for opening the chakra? Yeah, so when it comes to opening up your third eye, the sixth chakra especially, that's exactly what I'm gonna be teaching in the, in the five-day challenge. But you know everything that I mentioned so far about just getting the body relaxed to start, right? And then learning tools like grounding, which actually you learn on day one of the challenge, psychic protection, right? Which you'll also learn on day three of the challenge, right? All of those are really important so that you can open up your chakras um, safely, right? Without, without um, foreign energies coming in. And even if foreign energies do come in, just having the tools to give yourself a healing so that you can move those out, right? So all those are really important. All right, Shan says, I can't seem to ground. I'm unable to see the grounding cord still. Megan's asking, how do you ground yourself after being emotionally invested in reading someone else's energy and feeling drained? All right. So yeah, all these questions about grounding, right? And the thing with, especially when, how should I answer the question here? 
So there, there are two different questions. Let me answer them one at a time. I was trying to answer them both at the same time, but <laughs> let me answer. Let me address uh, Shanda's question first. So Shanda says, I can't seem to ground. I'm able to see the grounding cord still. All right. So Shanda, right? What I mentioned about being stuck in your second chakra, right? If you're having trouble seeing the energy, it means that you're still stuck in your lower chakras, right? So what would be very beneficial right? Is if you could still get that healing work, right? Clear so that you can come up, up to that sixth chakra, right? And start to read from there instead, right? And it's not that you can't see, because I know you have seen energy, Shanda, right? Um, but part of it, right? It's just that practice, right? When you get to that point of where, because it's either getting into panic mode too, right? It's like, oh, I can't see, or then you get into too much effort, then you start overthinking it again. Right, so all of those things still apply. Now, Megan, how do you ground yourself after being emotionally invested and in someone else's reading, um, feeling drained? That's, I call that psychic hygiene, right? When you're reading, you wanna try to make, keep your space clear as possible. Yes, while you're reading, other people's energies will get in your space, it's just, that's just what happens. But if you could establish your psychic boundaries, right? And having a sense of psychic protection, then you'll have less likely chance of feeling drained, like that drained, okay? Um, case in point, I did a reading for the public um, last Sunday. So if you, have, if you weren't able to catch that, you could actually see the replay of that in the Facebook group. Um, just so you know, you guys, whenever I do those public events, like there's so much energy coming at me, right? And I, I could read up to five people. And by the end of reading five people, like I even start getting affected a little bit. Um, but, you know, just having that psychic protection, right? Having the sense of psychic boundaries, super important, especially when I go live in public like that. And even now, right? All, you, all y'all's energies are coming at me. It's not like you're trying to throw energy at me, right? But that's just the course of what happens, okay? All right, so psychic protection, really important. Ayana, Joe's one of the best, and hey, oh, thank you, Ayana, great to see you, thank you for that. Uh, let me go back to Zoom again here. Um, Amber says, guided meditation is really good for beginners. Yeah, and I will be giving you some guided meditations. Roland, uh, I think the name is getting cut off here on Zoom. Uh, so if I'm mispronouncing, it's only because uh, it's getting cut off. Um, is self-doubt a normal process? Yes. Great question. So yes, doubt, right? Especially when you get to the point of like, like for me, when the lights kept turning off, right? I was like, is that my grandmother? But then I'd get into the energy of doubt, right? And because like, I can't literally see my grandmother, of course, like I can't, like my grandmother's not here physically to say yes, right? Yeah, it's me then yeah, it's easy to get doubtful. So yeah, totally is part of the process. Which by the way, let me just finish off that story. Um, when I did get into the training, right? I was like, I finally did make contact, you know, cleanly with my grandmother, right? And I'd ask my grandmother, that's you, that's been you with the streetlights. And I heard her say yes. And then I asked her, well, what is your message, right? What's your message? Because I, I felt like she was trying to tell me something. And her message was really simple. She's like, I just wanted to let you know, I've just been watching over you, right? And ever since that time, like the streetlights don't turn off for me anymore like that, right? They might turn off on occasion, but when I got the message, when I got the download, when I got like the message that she was trying to deliver to me, right? Spirit has a funny way of trying to get your attention. And like the street lights kept turning off and turning off and turning off until I finally got the message, right? But that whole time, right to your point, Roland, is that like I was in doubt of it all, okay? So that's one of my goals for each of you by joining the challenge. And for those of you that do choose to go into the eight-week program is to give you that validation, right? So you could overcome the doubt. And then once you get that validation, then it's like, hey, this is real, okay? You don't have to be in that doubt anymore, all right? Okay, so great question. <laughs> Amber's like, I'm already interested and we're just beginning, awesome. 
Um, Ravi, I need to focus better. Okay. And let me switch back to Facebook here. Let, I, there's like 22 messages that just came in on, <laughs> um, on Zoom. Let's see. Natasha says, I'm, I feel like I'm getting messages through the clouds, but I have a hard time making out words, but I see them all the time. You know, Natasha, that's great because actually you're already having clair a clairvoyant experience. So when you can start to see um, images, even if it seems like it's coming out of the corner of your eye, um, that's already having a clairvoyant experience. And yes, you know, it's one thing to get the picture, right? But it's another thing to get, what does it mean? Okay. And actually on day four of the five-day challenge, we're going to actually look at exactly how to get what does all that mean, right? Because you might get a picture of a sun or, or a rose, or you might get some symbol and you're seeing these things, but you're like, what does that mean? I have no idea, right? So that's all part of what you're going to learn on over the five-day challenge, okay? All right, so just know, Natasha, that that's all part of the process. So definitely attend the challenge and we'll get that figured out for you. All right, uh, let's see, my apologies on Zoom, you guys. Uh, it's, it's coming in very quickly. I'm gonna try to catch up. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm still catching up like when I was talking about fear, being scared. <laughs> all right. Amber's asking, will we learn how to deal with, get rid of the self-doubt? Absolutely, yeah. That's, like I said, that's one of my goals is just to help you get the confidence, okay? Um, let's see, a comment here, Nat W. So I can use a lot of the psychic medium gifts as I work around inner third eye closed. I've also been doing a lot of energy work for a while. so. When you work through the training, how will this open the inner eye? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. The inner eye, third eye, it's actually the same thing, right? Um, but let me just get the energy of your question. So when you work through the training, how will this open the inner eye? Okay, yeah, so just it's all part of the process, right? Um, trying to access that inner eye, as you state, I, I, call it, I just call it the third eye, right? Um, one of the things I'm actually going to teach you is actually how to find that inner eye, right? Um, I call it just being in the center of your head. And when you can operate from there, it's just a more clean way in order to view through your third eye, right? And when you could just find, I call it finding, it's like a new center, finding your center, right, um, of your clairvoyant space. When you could find that center, right? everything that I've talked about so far, right? Getting relaxed, releasing the doubt, stop overthinking, like that's all part of it, okay? So it's all part of the process. Uh, let's see, all right, so no more questions on Facebook. I'm just all answering questions here on Zoom. Okay, some of you are awesome, just con conversation back and forth. Okay, last question of the night, and then we're gonna call it a night here. Um, Robbie's asking, do you believe we all have gifts? My response to that is yes, okay? I believe that everyone has some kind of a gift. And who hasn't, you know what I mean? Like who hasn't thought of someone and then next thing you know, they text, right? Everyone's had that experience. Maybe people don't relate to that as like say being gifted, right? Because there's different degrees of being gifted. Some people are more open than others, but what do you call that, right? It's more than coincidence if like literally millions of people all around the world are having the exact same experience, right? You think of someone, they text you, like, how does that work, right? So yeah, I believe that we all have some degree of psychic gifts. Now, the willingness, right, to go down this path, like not everyone has that willingness, right? Um, for whatever reason, it could be even religious reasons, it could be doubt, it could be your best friend saying that you're going to be invaded, right? Which, like, don't listen to all that. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I believe that we're all gifted in some form or fashion. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions come in. So um, 
I want to just go ahead and end by saying thank you for attending this pre-training. I um, like to keep these to about an hour. And so join me this Sunday where we'll be doing pre-training number two. This time is going to be at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. All right. And if you have any more questions, then I invite you to attend that. And um, again, save the date for February 20th. That's when we kick off live. All right. Between now and then, if you have any questions at all, feel free to join my Facebook group if you haven't already. That's one of the best ways to reach me. Um, and you know, I, I try to read every single comment that I can and try to reply. And if I don't reply, uh, for those of you that did sign up, um, you could always reply to one of the emails. Okay, and um, either myself or my assistant will, you know, we'll make sure to get back to you. Okay. Other than that, it was great having you here. Great questions, great energy. I look forward to working with you guys. And I see a bunch of thank yous. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You are. You guys are most welcome. All right. Let's call it a night. And I will see you hopefully on Sunday. All right. All right. Bye for now, you guys.